100, the message translation, it says, on your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this. God is God and God, God. Did you get that revelation? There is no one like him. He said, God is God and God, God. He made us. We did not make him. We are his people, his well-tended sheep. This is where I'm really going tonight. He says, enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Why is the scripture letting us know? He said, make yourselves at home. Whatever is bothering you, don't worry about it right now. You are in the presence of God. Make yourselves at home. Feel at home. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Talk in praise and say, Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the gift of life. Lift up your voice and be talking praise. You are in the presence of God. Hey, let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice and let him know how beautiful he is. How wonderful you are, Father. You are magnificent. I worship you, Father. I come before you tonight, Lord. I praise you, my King. Hey, Jehovah Rapha. Hey, come and set it up a shot. I know. Lord, we exalt you tonight. Oh, my God, Let him hear your voice. Give him praise. Exalt him tonight. He is king. He is your God. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, you reign, Lord. You reign. You reign in victory, Father. Hey, we exalt you. We bless you, Lord, tonight. Hey, my God, Hey, Oh, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. Lord, we exalt you, my Lord. <laughs> oh, Father, we have come to say thank you. Oh, thank you, Father, for your protection, for your love, for your mercy and just forever. We say thank you, oh, Lord. Hey, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you know what the Lord wants to do here tonight, I'm telling you, your praises will be different. If you know that the Lord has been thinking about this meeting, He spoke to me about this meeting while we were at the retreat. And He said, Tonight, I want to deal with storms in your life. You may take a seat. We are doing things differently tonight. Amen. Thank you, sis. And so, <laughs> you know, on Tuesday, pastor was sharing with us. And he said, from Isaiah 33, 6, he said, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. And the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord, is his treasure. We need wisdom in these times that we are in. And so tonight, I just want to point out a few, um, a few steps on how to overcome storms in our lives. You see, storms are part of life that I see people always asking me questions like, Oh, the devil won't let me rest. Oh, why is it me? From one battle to another to another. But guess what? We have been lied to that when you become born again, all your storms are over. But that's not scripture. That's not in the Bible. He says in Psalm 34, 19, he says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. All, not just one. He says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So no matter what, you know the only thing you've done to the devil is that you believe in God. That's, that's why. If, if the devil is not troubling you, you are in his camp. He has already gotten you. 
And so he's, he's not even bothered about you. He's going out to recruit his own soldiers. He's like, I've already got this one. I'm not going to bother this one. But when he's bothering you, when he's trying to steal your faith, because when you're going through trials, you're like, God, are you still God? <laughs> it is written here. Is this written? Is this really true? And you know, you will have people say, you know, sometimes people will be letting you know, well, I don't know. The doctors are giving me this report. Which reports are you going to believe? They tell you, let's be realistic. Have you heard that before? People will tell you, oh, come on. Let's be practical. Let me tell you, the, the practicality that you need is the word of God. That's your reality. When they tell me, Rosemary, let's drop Christianity aside. And I say, pick up what? If I drop the word of God, what should I take? My carnal self? That is enmity against God. Amen? And so tonight, we are going to wage war according to the scriptures. The way that Jesus did it. I want you to start thinking of the storms in your life. The storms that are brewing in your life and you're thinking, Lord, when are you going to come through for me? Tonight, the Lord will come through for you. I want you to come with me and believe it. Because his word says that he will deliver you out of them all. You have to believe it. And you have to trust God that he is God. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. Verse 22, this is Jesus and his disciples. When you read the word of God, I always tell people, you must find yourself in the word of God. Every time you open the Bible, you must find yourself. How does this relate to me? And it happened on a certain day. Today is a certain day. And it happened today that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. You know that Jesus has already told us, he said, I can myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. So for Jesus to tell his disciples, let us go. You must have heard from the father. That let us go to the other side. Amen. And you have heard from your scriptures. You have heard the Lord has told you. Oh yeah 2022. You are going to be experiencing expansion. Amen. You have heard. You have a word from the Lord. That your children are a gift from you. Amen. The blessings of God makes rich and he has no sorrow. But when you look at your children. Right now you are like Lord this word is not hard enough. Amen. You look at your husband and you're like, I thought the blessings of God makes rich, but no. <laughs> right now, this marriage is not adding up. A certain day, today, is going to add up. Amen. And so, in verse 23, he's saying, But as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and they were in jeopardy. <laughs> Did you read that? The Lord has already given you a word and here comes trouble. Here comes the storm. You see, God is saying go. And the devil is like, where are you going? <laughs> I'm waiting for you on the sea. The storm is rising. The Lord has given you a word. He has said to you, my, he has given you so many words that you believe in. But the enemy is coming at you. It's like the words are not adding up. Tonight, they are going to add up. Amen. And in verse 24, it says, And they came to him and awoke him, <laughs> saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Let me just stop here you will get to the other side. But while you get there, your words are very powerful. While you get there, look, they already condemned themselves. They said, Master, Master, we are perishing. When you are going through storms, your words carry weight. Remember the power of... Um, oh, what's the scripture again? That the, the power of the words lies in your tongue. 
I paraphrased that. Life and death, thank you. Life and death lies in the power of your tongue. What are you saying? When you're going through a storm, it is not a time to start condemning yourself. Oh, whatever the sickness is, it's not a time to say, oh, this is my sinus, it's going to kill me. It's not going to kill you. You, when you are going through storm, you can't be saying, this child, you are giving me a headache. This child will continue to give you a headache because you are speaking that words over that child. Whatever the doctors are, are telling you, you can't keep repeating it. They say, I have a thyroid um, infection. They say, I have COVID. They say, I have this. And you keep magnifying your problem. You keep magnifying the storm. Tonight, you have to learn and say, no, I am not perishing. Look what Jesus said. <laughs> then Jesus arose and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm. <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught that. Jesus arose. Jesus wasn't wondering, what should I do? He arose. Tonight, I want to encourage us. So this is what we are doing. We are going to arise. Jesus wasn't complaining. He wasn't there whining. He wasn't there crying. Because until you arise, your storms are going to be controlling you. Until you arise, those storms are going to be making you feel like you are perishing. And you have to learn to arise. This is why Jesus, Jesus is our ultimate example. Whatever Jesus did, that's what we are going to do. Because he already told us. He said, you, you are, greater works are you going to do than I did. And so look at it. Jesus arose. You have to arise. You can't be questioning God. There is no time to start questioning God. Like, God, you said we should go to the other side. What's happening? God, you gave me these children. You gave me this business. Your word says that you have given me power to get wealth, but my business is not looking like that. There is no time to start questioning God. You just have to arise and rebuke the storm. You have to arise and rebuke the storm because as long as you are sleeping, you are still a victim. As long as you are sleeping, you are still a victim. As long as you recognize and say, this is a storm. This is a storm. I need to do something about it. The Lord has given us the power. He said, you are more than a conqueror. Remember, pastor has taught us what it means to be more than a conqueror. Already to be a conqueror, you're on this level. You have already conquered. Jesus has already conquered for you. And now he says you are more than a conqueror. You have gone to another level. And so you have to recognize the fact that you have the power to rebuke that storm that is brewing in your life. And so... Because we don't recognize that life is not a fun fair. This is one trick that the devil made on us. Oh, everything is good. It's okay. If I need money, I can go to the bank and borrow money. Mm -mm. Life is warfare. And you have to arise to fight this warfare. Look what it says here. You need this. <laughs> In verse 25, it said... Where is your faith? Where is your faith? The Lord is asking you. Do you have faith in the doctors? Do you have faith in the systems of this world? Do you have faith in your prayers? Or you have faith in God himself? Where is your faith? Ask yourself tonight, where is my faith? Where do you put your faith? And they were afraid and marveled. <laughs> saying to one another who can this be <laughs> for he commands even the winds and water and they obey him <laughs> I don't know did you guys get that they said who is this do you guys remember the story that they Jesus said let's go to the other side they were Jesus' disciples so they should have seen miracles. 
right? They should have known that this is Jesus, our Messiah that we've been waiting for. And now when they saw the miracle where he commanded the water, they were like, who is this one? God wants to show you another dimension of him that you haven't experienced before. You know him as your healer. You know him as your savior. You want to know him as your provider now. They are wondering, you see, when we obey God, when we go through these storms, people will be wondering and asking, who is this one? They will marvel at your faith. Do you know why the Lord wants to deal with the storms in our life? So that we can go out there and strengthen our brethren. Brother Matthew is not the only evangelist amongst us. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all men. Are you making disciples right now? Are you making disciples or you are even joining them? You know, people are saying, oh, this world is going down. You are saying, yeah, it's going down. There, there, there is no words coming out of your mouth. Words of power. So, this is why the Lord wants to deal with the storms in our life. So we can have a testimony. So when people are talking about testimony, you also have a testimony. You also see the dimension of God that you haven't experienced before. I know him as my savior, but I haven't experienced his healing power. Not me, I have. The Lord has saved me many times. He has healed me from sicknesses that I don't even know about. You see, until I start, when, like I told you guys about PCOS, when I was bleeding in my teens, until I saw a woman sharing a testimony, she said, oh, I was bleeding like the woman with the issue of blood. I was like, that was me. For three months, I was bleeding nonstop. I did not even know the Lord. But he healed me. The woman struggled to, to conceive for eight years because of that. And the day I realized that, I was like, wow, <laughs> the Lord healed me from this. He saved me already even before I came to him. That is how much he is a loving father. That is how much he has come for you tonight to say that storm that is like an idol in your life. And every time you lay down to sleep, you're thinking about it. Every time you want to eat, you just remember what you're going through and saying, Lord, when are you going to come through for me? You promise promised me this. When is it going to happen for me? It's going to happen tonight. One thing I also want to mention when you're going through storms, it's not a time to isolate yourself. Can you see the disciples, they were, they were with Jesus when the storms happened. Because when you're going through storms and you isolate yourself, guess what? That's the enemy trying to isolate you. The enemy is telling you, don't go. Don't go to church. You want to go there? Everybody will know what's going on. Oh, no. You want to keep your secret secret. Listen, if you go anywhere, paraventure you share it and they, they go and talk about you. Listen, it's not on you. Don't put that burden of shame on you. No, that's the enemy. Don't put it on you. Just say, you know what? You are, you, are not, you are not in my team. You are not part of my family that will pray me through this. Amen? Don't let the, 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 um, the experience of the past stop you from enjoying the presence of God. Because when you come into the presence of God and you hold your sister's hand and say, Manuelita, please pray for me. I am going through this. Let me tell you, by the time you walk out, you will feel like a lion again. You will be like, yes, I have been in the presence of God where there is fullness of joy because Satan is going around looking for whom he may devour. Amen. And so, this is what the Lord has put on my heart today. That every storm that we're going through in this season, <laughs> say to yourself, the storm is over. The storm is over. So I want us to, we're going to be praying now. If you're going to get up, if you know you're going through any storm and you want to bring it to the feet of Jesus, come out here. We are all going to be praying together.
and saying, Father, I thank you for your word that has come. Hey, my sister, the double shant hand, the yandu sata. Hey, I kuri yandu sata, the double kuri amasotori yande. Oh, Father, Lord, begin to tell the Lord, begin to tell Him and say, Father, this time is over. This time is over. Oh, yeah, my sotori yandu sata. The one say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Begin to say, this time is over in my life. He, my family, I don't care. He's been generational. It is over. It is over tonight. Father, Lord, I come before you. I surrender it to you no more. I am going on victorious. Begin to let the Lord know what the storms are. Hey, come on. Oh, Lord. You said children are a heritage of the Lord. Hey, come on. Oh, great. Oh, great. Oh, Father Lord, I bring my children before you, oh God. Whatever that storm is, oh God, Father, I rebuke the storm tonight. I rebuke the storm tonight in your life, in your business, in your family, Lord. I rebuke the storm. Hey, come on, Hey, 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 Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt you tonight, Father. We are coming back with testimonies. We are coming back with testimonies, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Holy Spirit just put this on my heart. If you're going through any storms with your children, forgive your parents. Forgive your parents. Oh, forgive your parents. Hey, Lama Sotorianda, ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you and say, Lord, help me to forgive my parents. You see. Many times, you see, forgiveness makes us feel justified, like uh, unforgiveness makes you feel justified, like they did me dirty. They did me dirty. They, they, they hurt my feelings. I know. I've been there. It makes you feel like, oh, I can't let go. You have to let go. Your prayer is an abomination before the Lord if you don't forgive your brothers and sisters. And you know the good news? The Lord loves the one that offends you. I'm telling you, the Lord is not going to kill them for you. He, he wants them to come to Him. And so if you know, because... <laughs> I see this happen a lot of times. People are holding on to unforgiveness. Their parents have offended them and they are there. They are like, I'm not letting go. I beg you tonight, let go. And you will see that transformation in your family, even your children. Because when you hold someone in unforgiveness, you are in bondage, you are tormenting yourself. Go and read Matthew 18. It's there. I don't have time. I would have gone into it. But I just want to let you know that it's time to let go. It's time to let go. Oh, let's lift up our voice and give the Lord a big shout of praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Rosemary. Praise the Lord. Welcome home. Welcome to Communion House. We're so glad to have you here tonight. Um, raise your hand if it's your first time here worshiping with us tonight. Praise God. Let's give them a big round of applause. Praise the Lord. Um, wow, it's just so exciting, isn't it? And um, I am not going to be long. Um, so without further ado... Please welcome um, a brother in our church who is in it to win it. He's in it for the Lord, for us, for the long haul. And 
he sees angels. The Lord speaks to him clearly. And the Lord has given him a very special word for you tonight. Um, so uh, again, we welcome you and uh, we see you as our family and we love each and every one of you so much. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Without further ado, please welcome our brother, um, Brother Allen. Thank you. God bless. Okay. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on now. Oh God, there's none like you. Oh God, there's Father, for your word declares, draw nigh unto you, and you will draw nigh unto us. Father, we give you praise because you indeed have drawn nigh unto us. Father, we ask of thee, help us to hear. Give us the ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches this night. All glory and honor belong to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Let's be seated. I'm telling y'all, it's not gonna be long. Father, we give you praise. So the woman of God, Pastor Rosemary, she set us out already. We on fire. And I want us, as I shared earlier, to really posture ourselves in the realm of the Spirit to be on the edge of our seat, to receive what the Lord is saying this hour. Um, we're going to go through a number of things. Uh, Pastor Rosemary brought up even a couple of scriptures that I'll share with us tonight because we're going to continue in wisdom. And as we've learned this season, what does wisdom do? It answers the why, all right? And so a lot of knowing how to navigate the storms in our life, and to possess the gates that are ours in the Lord is us having to know or understand the why behind it so that we can correctly position ourselves, all right? And so we're going to go ahead and get into this. I want to open up with this, all right? The book of Hebrews chapter 11. Some have referenced this chapter as the hall of faith. We're going to continue in wisdom. We're going to continue in faith tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. And this is going to set the foundation for what the Lord is doing tonight because by the grace of God, there has been a prophetic update in what has been ministered to us this season that's going to prepare us. All right. So earlier, what do we say to posture ourselves to receive the word of preparation for this hour. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through two, it reads, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. All right, and so what I wanna help us with tonight is how we're obtaining that good testimony. Somebody help my baby. Look like he's going to sleep. The word says, again, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. So to the glory of God, we're going to examine the good testimony obtained by one of our patriarchs, Father Abraham. All right, so this night, we're going to do a bit of reading. I want us to prepare, all right? We're gonna do a bit of reading and we're really gonna unlock the whys in Father Abraham's life. And we're gonna go ahead and set the foundation here so that we know and can track with the Holy Spirit this night. It reads here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, excuse me, this excerpt references Genesis 22 verses one through two where it reads, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, 
and go to the land of Moriah. Moriah means chosen by Jehovah because we need to understand where the Lord is taking us because the places that we go, every bullet mark, every checkpoint in our life has been chosen by the Lord. Okay, we wouldn't be in that place if it was not already written in the volume of the book. So we need to understand that. In verse three, it reads, so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. All right. Now, this is where we about to flow. We about to go deep. It reads here. Or my question to us is, have we ever asked ourselves why the Lord asked Abraham to offer up Isaac? The scriptures say he was going to be tested, but why did he need to be tested? Has anybody ever asked that? We're going to be interactive tonight. Okay. Brother Charles did. Brother John did. All right. I'm here. <laughs> it reads in Genesis 22, in the New King James Version, that section of text or that chapter is titled, Abraham's Faith Confirmed. And so what we're going to examine here is why his faith needed to be confirmed, all right? Why was it titled this? Why did it need to be confirmed? Because we know that this season, we've been reminded that wisdom answers the why, all right? And we need to know the why this season in order to do what? To wage war. All right, because we also know this is a season that the Lord is preparing us. He's teaching us how to wage war in the realm of the spirit to possess the gates that are before us. And so I want to come, I want to pivot for a minute, actually. Because in order to find out the why, we have to do some digging. Now, several times in uh, our recent messages, the man of God, Pastor Moses, has encouraged us to read the texts that the 60 book, six books that we have reference that are not in the 66. All right, I'm going to make it make sense. Let's go to Joshua real quick. The book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13. And I trust it's going to hit y'all in the head. Y'all going to know exactly where we're going. It reads, so the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Check this out. And I want to make sure you have this pulled up because it is in that book that you have. It says, is this not written in the book of Yasher? Oh, come on. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. I just want to make sure y'all have the evidence here that I'm not making this up. Come with me to 2 Samuel. 1 verse 18, praise the Lord, Shikida. It reads, and he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. It reads here, indeed, it is written in the book of Yasher. Oh, come on, somebody's going to be blessed tonight. Because when you can get, as pastor says, the full import all right, of what the Lord was doing in Abraham's life, you're going to begin to see, you're going to walk through tests with your chest up. You're going to walk through trial and tribulation with your chest up because the, the Lord desires to be glorified in your life. So tonight, I'm going to present to us the book of Yasher. Here we will find why the Lord asked Abraham to offer Isaac why he wanted to be tested. Now he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches. Please dial into this. It reads, the book of Yasher, chapter 23, starting at verse 46. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, 
What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? Now, I'm going to jump in here real quick. If you need help finding this text, please see me after service. I'll direct you to even the text that I have so you can read it for yourself. I want you all to be blessed by this. We'll read verse 48 again. It says, And the Lord said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease and forsake thee, and they remember thee no more. I want y'all to check this out. Let's get a visual. The Lord called a meeting, and Satan decided to show up. All right? And he didn't just show up, but when the Lord asked him, what have you been doing? He brought accusation against the children of the earth. And so we have to understand our enemy. We have to understand how he operates. Again, the scripture reads, by wisdom we wage war. Okay, 1 Peter 5, 8, which the woman of God mentioned earlier, it reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What did Satan say he was doing? He said from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now it says your adversary, the devil, okay? This is gonna, con uh, it's gonna help us in our posture in studying the word and understanding of even desiring to read because adversary here is your opponent in the suit of law. It's not just an opponent, someone that's just, I'm trying to stop you. But this is someone that is coming to bring legal accusation against you in order to inhibit your flow. All right? Now, the woman of God just came and said, look, you have to show up and rebuke that thing. All right? I'm telling you, it's going to bless you tonight. So I wanted to make sure we pinpointed what adversary meant. It's not just your regular opponent. This is someone that is bringing legal calls against you. All right? And so what inspired all of this, though? So further study of the scriptures, it reveals there were voices in heaven regarding Abraham. Now, this is leading up to before Abraham had to offer Isaac or was asked to offer Isaac. And the voices in heaven said, who is this guy? He's faithful in all that he does. The inhabitants of heaven, they observe what we do here. We have the ability to be made known in the things of the spirit such that those that reside there that will soon be here will know us already. Oh yeah, I remember you, Tia. You're the one that did X, Y, Z in the name of the Lord. Oh, let me help you. This is an insight that I have for you. This is a secret that I have for you to establish your family here. See, we got to get in the vein of being unknown to what we can see and being known to what we cannot see. Come on, it's gonna bless you. The scriptures say that as they were having this conversation, again, it's in the book of Yasha, there were voices in heaven regarding Abraham. Now, let me pivot. So, the book of Yasher details a lot of the why, but I'm going to throw this nugget out here. You can go even further into the book of Jubilees. This is what was written when Moses was on the mountain. He didn't just come down with the tablets, but there was an angel there that was assigned him, and he wrote many mysteries. Ah, come on. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. See, tonight, it's an impartation. It, it's, a, it's a point of contact for us to really dive into the word. Because if you have not realized yet, we are a, a tribe of people. Look, if you're a part of communion house and you're still here, you are someone that has been designated to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. But it's up to you to show up, okay, is this what the scriptures reference? Let me go here. 
and the Lord who brings understanding will bring it to you. You show up by opening the book. And it says here, conversations were being had. Oh, this guy, Abraham, this, this is some guy. And what it says here is that he loved the Lord. This is still the conversation they were having in heaven. And that in every affliction, he was faithful. Now, if I stop right here, we can think of several afflictions where we didn't do so hot. I know. We can think of several where we showed our behind. All right? But this is going to encourage us to begin to assess, to ask the Lord in all that we do, because the scriptures tell us to test the spirit by the spirit. Everything that comes your way. Lord, what is this? We have to know. It's written in the volume of the books. It reads here, he was faithful in every affliction. And the scriptures read that Satan came before God and said, behold, Abraham loves Isaac, his son, and he delights in him above all things else. Bid him, offer him as a burnt offering on the altar, and thou wilt see if he will do this command, and thou wilt know if he is faithful in everything wherein thou dost try him. So we've laid the foundation here that Abraham's faithfulness in the earth was such that it had reached heaven. And Satan was going to and fro and heard them guys talking about Abraham. Hey Amen. that guy Abraham is off the chain. Who is that? Hey, Lord, command him to do this. Now, we're understanding the why. Abraham was minding his business, okay? But his action, his posture in the Lord was such that, see, the scriptures say that Abraham is the possessor of heaven and of earth. He was known in both realms. I'm not going to go off tangent. It says here that when Satan had caught wind of this conversation, he just came to accuse Abraham. All right? And so again, what have we been encouraged to know or, or to, to, to pursue? We've been encouraged to pursue being known in the realm of the spirit. How do we do this? By seeking the Lord, by reading his word, by praying, by closing that door and just going, Rakita, fakite, tu the Holy Spirit, whatever you need to speak through me. Eventually, you're going to be knocking doors down and heaven's going to say, who is this that keeps coming before the throne? Who is this? After a while, you begin to become more sensitive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches, to his move, such that heaven begins to invite you. Oh, let me tell you about this. But it's in our posture of doing what is not seen, going in our closet, closing the door, and seeking the Lord, reading and praying. I'm wrapping this up. It reads here that... As the accusation had come, thank you, Lord, we know what the scriptures read. The word had come, Abraham, offer your son up. And it says here that Abraham built the altar, placed the wood on the altar, and bound Isaac, his son. Now, <laughs> does anybody know how old Isaac was when this happened? Take a wild guess, wild guess. I, I, no, you can't say it. You can't say that's my wife. Say that. 14. 17. One more guess. 10. What was that? Oh, you're close. Isaac was 37. <laughs> this is why we got to get in the book. Isaac was 37. Do you know that when he was being offered up, Isaac even said, look, father, tie me this way and that way in the event I decide to run. They were sold out to the things of God. Now, okay, I figured y'all would find that a blessed nugget in the things of God. And so it says here, what did we read? Abraham built the altar, placed the wood on the altar, and bound Isaac, his son, I'm going to have to bring, I'm going to have to get that to you personally. 
that because we're still in, in Yasher. And we're also actually referencing Jubilees here. So again, y'all come talk to me. Y'all come talk to me after service. I'll share it with you. All right. Oh, come on. What's that? Chapter 23. Okay, okay, awesome sauce. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh, come on. Right. I should know. This is communion house. This is what we do. We do the most. All right. <laughs> so it reads here. So he had placed the, the, the uh, built the altar, placed the wood on there. And the scripture say, and he stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay Isaac, his son. Now check this out. We learn here that as Isaac built the altar, now I'm sorry, as Abraham built the altar and placed Isaac on it and bound him, as we read the texts, as Moses wrote, or I should say, as the angel of the Lord wrote for Moses, as he was recording this thing, the scriptures say that the Lord, the angels of the Lord and Satan all stood watching. They all stood watching him do this. And just, see, okay. We got to know what we do here. Heaven is, is observing 24 seven. See, this is gonna cause us to walk again with our chest up, with our head held high in all that we do. What do the scriptures encourage us to do? Everything, do it as you're doing it unto the Lord. Now this is prime time TV. The Lord, the angels of the Lord and Satan were all standing watching Abraham take his son up the mountain, bind his son, take the knife out and was getting ready to slay him. We know how the rest of this story reads. But then the voice came from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, to not slay his son. And here, Abraham's faith was confirmed. And Satan, the accuser of the brethren, was put to shame. We know here that provision was made, the ram that was in the thicket, to give offering unto the Lord. The scriptures even say that the ram that was caught up in the thicket, the Lord said, I prepared this one since the beginning of time for this moment. But see, what the Lord did was he allowed all of that show just to show off his son Abraham. Because the scriptures say that Abraham was already proven faithful. By this time, the Lord said, look, I already know. This guy is tried and true. But Satan came after the fact. He didn't know any of this, but the Lord said, all right, I got you. And so we got to understand some of what we go through the testing that we go through is for the Lord to show you off. So the Lord can show off his prized possession. This is the one I paid for. Pastor Rosemary, this is my daughter. I want you to see what she does. Because in all, it brings glory to his name. I hope by now this is blessing someone. This is why we got to know the why. Because we know this is a season of preparation. We've said preparation, I don't know how many times now. We've said testing, I don't know how many times now. But see, the Lord is doing it such that we be found blameless. That we be found so that we be presented in such a way to heaven to say, hey, this one is worthy of a crown in me. This one deserves. This is what's belonging to this one. And so I want us to be blessed in this season as we press toward the mark, as we possess the gates to have faith in God, knowing that wisdom is here. If you haven't realized yet, we're having a one-on-one -on -one session with wisdom. Wisdom has been breaking down so much to us, helping us understand the why this evening. My prayer for us is that we receive revelation of the power of faith in God. Giving glory to God in all testing and trial and tribulation that we too will obtain a good testimony. Let's give glory to God. Let's stand where we are. Because I'm here to tell y'all this is a serious matter. Maki Maki Edimo. 
Furate ekus adebroso o tereboso. Shikarabasi ike. Soto rebete e tereboso. Really stir yourselves up right now because we have an update in the realm of the spirit that we're about to unleash, that we're about to share. Sakati ata. Futor ami aki ise. Take this time to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Come on, talk to God. Keep praying, keep praying, keep pressing in, keep pressing in, keep pressing in. say ata rabatatata. If you're amongst us and have not yet received the baptismal of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe that he died for your sins and rose again for you, receive by faith now and begin to speak. Lord, I pray thee, let your mercy prevail this night. Sekata, shikata, ta, ta, ta. So, praise God for the woman of God here. Before we get into this update, we want to touch and agree with you. If the leaders in this house would come forward, we want to touch and agree with anyone that may not be operating yet with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If there are any amongst us, if you desire it, come. Let us touch and agree with you right now. Futura is and diribusa. Maka yidali foto. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come, come here. Come here. Se taba. She batata. Foto ramasi. Boti akaremoso. Boso, let's pray. I want to find this scripture. Let's keep praying. Let's keep praying in the spirit. I want to find this scripture real quick. O Sadabasi. Oh, have mercy, O God. Si ita. Shoko rabata. Bosa ati de bruso. O kurebe te 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 te. Makarabati ete. O ta ati a de bruso. O te de bruso. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 17 and 19 read Then they began laying their hands on them, and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. Father, we give you praise for the laying on of hands tonight. Se e tarabasi, o te adabasi, o rebasi e, sho karabai te awai, si ke tu arabasi ita, so ko rebete e te rebosa. Come on, turn yourself up, turn yourself up. Ye te re 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 sh, yo so o tarabasi, e se e te reboso o tararasi, fa karababa babasi e te reboso. O God, be glorified tonight. Si e carreboso, o terebasi e terebroso, o te e carabasi e kereboso. Sheke se e tereboso, o te. Isaac, this is your night tonight. Se kefu a salibasi. Warre da da e carrebayo. Riwayo. Sure de 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 O te re 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 so, me karababa so, eshe te de re bo so, o ko ra da ra 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 so. Glory to God, se he nda fa si, mo ko re be ti a ta ra 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 so, sho ko re te te re bo so. If there are any, uh, any others amongst us, please, tonight can be your night. In the name of Jesus. 
Bunda bayadi Ha ha Sifani Moso Glory to God! Yeah, 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 yeah! Sirewa! Burra da 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 Basi ke terebosa, makarababas, basi ati arararas, foko rederes, wode adie. Oh, let's give a shout of praise. Irada adie, wuda da 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 si ekwa adie. Hey ya, Father, we will praise you forever. Because you have done it. This night, you have done it, oh God. See, he, all glory and honor belong to you. See, uh, the woman of God said it. See, this is a new thing tonight. This is something different tonight. And I'm thankful that the Lord has orchestrated it such that we're charged up because we know that we have tuned ourselves to the frequency of heaven. And now we must hear what this prophetic update is. Let's remain standing. Let's remain standing. We're getting ready to land this plane. Y'all know how the man of God say. So, just Tuesday, the woman of God, Pastor Rosemary, announced to us what's not being reported in the news, okay? And what was that? Nigeria, uh, that's right, that's right. Nigeria is experiencing severe flooding. Okay, and as a result, one of the major rice producers have been impacted, all right? And so, what do we know this is a sign of? This is a sign of famine, okay? Now, I come to you tonight as a witness. Just this week, I was taken into the realm of the Spirit, and I saw two full moons. Then the sky opened and oxen and cattle were sucked up like a vacuum through the opening. Let your spirit man arise and hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. I saw two full moons. The sky opened and oxen and cattle were sucked up like a vacuum. Family, for some time now, the man of God has shared with us, look, you need to prepare for 14 days worth of stock in your household food, water, toiletries, etc. All right? Just Tuesday, the woman of God reminded us of that thing. I come before you as a witness to share as a man under authority that this is soon coming to pass. Do not wait. And see, I'm going to be real with you. When I first heard it, I said, all right, this, this was maybe, this was over a year ago now. Okay, Lord, got it. But it seemed like a big task. 14 days worth of stock. Where am I going to put it? How much it going to cost? Real talk. And it wasn't until 
there was a conversation Pastor and I had recently where I said, okay, Lord, look, I need to know because I, I'm discerning, I'm picking up something in my spirit that this is soon to come, but I need to know. And so I reached out and we had a conversation and we began to speak about those things and then it began to come clear to me how soon this thing is. And re remember, the Lord has been teaching us in the signs of the times, all right? The Lord has been teaching us how to interpret the messages that we're receiving, when we're receiving it, what's being said, okay? Being uh, uh, operating even uh, in the anointing that the sons of Issachar uh, uh, flowed in, knowing what to do at what time. We have to to understand that we have come to a place where the Lord has chosen to speak to us plainly. It's a blessing. But so many times we see in scripture as the Lord spoke in parables, even still the disciples would pull the man of God to the side. Hey, <laughs> what does that mean? And the Lord would share. And see, we have to seek after God to know he knows those who seek to know. I want us to be encouraged in this. Now, you may be saying, all right, how am I going to proportion myself to prepare? And what had come to me was here a little, there a little. All right? You're going to the grocery store. I, I see that pack of meat for $8. Let me just get it, put it in the deep freezer. I'm at the dollar store. Here goes six rolls of tissue. Let me get that. Kroger got a 40 pack of water for $5. And you take these next couple of months to build yourself up, all right? Because I'm telling you, we're coming to this time and it's gonna be very real. Now, I want to remind us, thank you Holy Spirit, of what the man of God ministered to us that hit me strong, that really took me in this direction this week. We received the word last year that the man of God saw angels coming, replenishing the pantries of the men and women of God. Now, <laughs> let me help you. <laughs> let me help you. Have something in your pantry to be replenished. This is a faith walk. Faith without works is dead. Do what you can while it's still called today. Glory to God. I know this has blessed you. The Lord has moved mightily in our midst. Let's give God glory again. Shehi karabas. Ose eta. For God, we know that there is safety in the multitude of counselors. Oso onde. Lord, we worship you tonight. Let's say out loud, my confidence is in the Lord. My confidence is in the Lord. My confidence is in the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now I want to welcome my brother John up here to get us right for offering. Woo. Man, praise the Lord. Second Kings chapter four. Now the wife of the son of one of the men who tell what will happen in the future, cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead. You know that your servant honored the Lord with fear, but the man to whom he owed money has come to take my two children to make them serve him. Elisha said to her, what can I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your woman's servant has nothing in the house except for a jar of oil. Then he said, go around and get jars from all your neighbors, get empty jars, many of them. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour the oil into all the jars and set aside each one that is full. So she went with him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They took the jars to her and they poured. When the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another jar. And he said to her, there is not one jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God. And he said, go and sell the oil and pay what you owe. You and your sons can live on the rest. If you look at this, they were going through a trial. Think about it. The woman's husband died. They had no income coming in at all. Her sons were going to be sold as slaves. They had nothing. 
and she cried out to the Lord. She said, God, we served you. What's going on? We're starving. The bills are coming in. They're going to take away my family. And you see here, the righteous never go hungry. Ever go hungry. If, the, if God who created you, who died on the cross for you, who sees the bird that falls from the sky, think about it. If he cares about the bird that falls from the sky, doesn't he care about you? Think about it. And we see in this story here how much he cares for us. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. If you actually go back in your life, many things you probably prayed for, you can see. Things you prayed about 10 years ago, look how God has been faithful. Many times we forget those. We forget those blessings. We go, you know, I forgot about something that happened 10 years ago. You know, I was praying to God during this trial, and I forgot about that. Five years ago. Think about what you were praying for five years ago. What God gave you. Sometimes we get comfortable. That house you're living in, that was literally, you were praying for that house. Or that car you were driving. Oh, God, just fix this. Provide for this. The next... You know, many times we forget about that. You know, here at Communion House, um, this place is really a blessing. It's really a blessing because, you know, we're a family here. And I hear so many stories of people that come to the church, you know, and just their lives are blessed, their lives are changed. Um, literally, I mean, uh, somebody donated a car to the church one time. The church donated to somebody else and it literally changed their life. Story after story after story after story. Uh, we could go on forever. People that needed a job and Pastor helped connect them with people, you know, they can get a job. People that needed their phone bill paid and Pastor helped them. People that needed this and that. And you can see how the, how the church has been a huge blessing. We're not after your money at all. Every dollar that comes in, literally, it, it helps serve people, bless people over and over and over. And I can attest to that. Literally, it blessed people over and over and over. We have many ways you can give. They make it very simple text, you know, to give. You can give through Cash App, many ways. Uh, and every dollar you give, you know, it is a blessing. And I'll tell you, you know, somebody goes, well, you know, I don't have much. Brother John, I don't, you know. Well, the way I see it a lot is, you know, if we can give $5 to Starbucks, which has an idol on the cup, you know, can we give $5 to the kingdom? You know, I, I, it was funny. One time I, I gave, a, I was just, this is like two, three years ago, a little testimony. I didn't have a lot in my pocket at the time. And uh, I had like $10 on me, I think. It was like $10. And Pastor Moses said, he said, you know, what you give, I pray it will be magnified tenfold. And we, were, we were in the uh, other location at the time, the Christ Culture Center. And I gave like $10. I literally had like nothing on me. And uh, one of the brothers came up right after and he said, God told me to give you $100 right now. And I was like, what? Literally, I just gave $10, and within like 20 minutes, I had just, I'm, I'm seeing it manifest, and I'm going, okay, God, like Pastor Moses just said, multiply tenfold, and this guy just comes at me. I barely even knew this guy, like barely even knew him. He just handed it to me. God told me to give you this, and I was like, okay. There you go, Lord. Time and time again, we see this stuff. Pastor, you know, was talking about before where you were getting, he was getting checks in the mail, just like, okay, what's going on? I can attest to that too. When I, I started giving, I'm like, well, God, you know, I'm going to give you this. Um, it's a heart thing. I said, God, I don't got a lot at the time, but I'm going to give you this. And I would get checks in the mail, random checks. Hey, you know, you overpaid for your car. And I said, who overpays for their car? Come on, think about that. Like literally, like I bought a car and they're like, sorry, you overpaid on your taxes and fees. I was like, what? They're like, here's a $500 check. I'm like, okay, thank you, God. That $50 I gave, you multiplied to 500, okay. So I see over and over and over again, the righteous never go hungry. When you give to Communion House, it is a blessing. It goes to the kingdom. In many ways, you know, you can give here. I encourage you, and we'll take a few more seconds here, and then we're going to bless it. Also, I encourage you, invite somebody here. We have cards on the way out. If you need one, you can see me. Uh, invite somebody here you never know how i could change your life you know you know being a licensed counselor here in georgia i tell you everybody's struggling everybody in this room everybody's struggling in some way or another and people need to be here because their lives are going to be changed you never know somebody in the grocery store behind you you never know i said this before i said my waitress 
I gave her a card. She broke down and said, I just had a miscarriage. We've been trying for years to get pregnant. And she broke down and said, I can't go because I'm working seven days a week, but I will watch online. And she was crying there. You never know what somebody's going through. They need to be here. It could change your life. So take a card, invite somebody. You never know. Is it worth it? Maybe it's, you're like, well, it's awkward, Brother John. Listen, 30 seconds of awkwardness, what if it's for their eternity? Think about that. Is it worth enough to get them into heaven? To save them from hell? Take a card. I encourage you to invite somebody. Dear Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the tithes and offerings today, Lord. We thank you for every single person that's here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for blessing them, blessing them, blessing them, Lord. We lay it before your feet now, Lord. Thank you for multiplying this house, Lord. Thank you for strengthening every single person in here. Whatever's going in their life goal right now, Lord, the trials, the tribulations, we thank you, Lord, that their blessings have been activated, that they're coming, Lord, that your angels are there with them, Lord, whether it's financial issues, whether it's relationship issues, whatever's going on, Lord, we know that you care, Lord. You are there with them, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed, Lord. Thank you that you are our provider in all things, Lord. Thank you for direction, peace, love, Lord, all over every person in here, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Bless the tithes, bless the offerings, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word tonight, Lord. We thank you for strengthening us, Lord. Let your light flow through us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Y'all, we was about to get out of here without doing communion. So let's stand. Let's prepare our hearts. I'm going to finish passing this out. Oh, thank you, woman of God. Thank you so much. Let me grab one. Let me grab one. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Si haki futura. Mandi broso ho se de bayaki. Father, we thank you for your word declares that when they broke the bread, their eyes were open. Let's go ahead and open the elements. Father, we thank you for the finished work of the cross, for your body that was broken and your blood that was shed in our behalf. Father, we thank you for that precious blood that speaks even now better things than that of the blood of Abel. Lord, we remind ourselves this night that it speaks continually concerning us, oh God. Father, all glory and honor belong to you. Now let's eat and let's drink. Let's eat the body and drink the blood, both of our Lord and Jesus, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woman of God, do we have any special announcements? I don't think so. If, um, if this is your first time, please, if you have not yet, we have connect cards. Please check these out over here. Fill it out. Uh, give us your information. We'd love to stay in contact with you. Uh, we push out updates via text and email so that you're aware of what we're doing. Uh, we want you to be a part of Sweet Fellowship here at Communion House. Uh, Tuesday, of course, we have family dinner. And teaching Tuesdays has been off the chain. Food has been off the chain. Come get fed and get fed. You heard what I said. Come get fed and get fed. Praise God. Lord, we give you praise. All glory belong to you because you have done it this night. Father, we thank you that you have found this evening sweet and pleasurable unto you. Now, Lord, with how you have encouraged us by your Holy Spirit, through the ministry of your angels, O oh God, help us to do, help us to understand, operate, help us to operate in what you have said this hour, O oh God, to your glory. 
Father, we thank you for indeed we go forth and we possess the gates. For God, you teach our hands for war, our fingertips for battle. For Lord, it's by wisdom. Father, we thank you that we have met with wisdom this night. Oh God, we have cried out and you have answered. Wisdom has come amongst us and has taught us wondrous things, has taught us mysteries, O oh God, of the kingdom. Now, Lord, continue to teach us, continue to take us by the hand, O oh God, into the depths of you. All glory and honor belong to you. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah! Have a blessed week.